Great is thy faithfulness. Yes. So be careful for nothing. Yes. But in everything by prayer and supplication. Yes, sir. With thanksgiving. Yes, sir. Let your requests be made known uh -huh. unto God. Tell me, tell me. And the peace of God pass it all understanding. So keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, yeah. whatsoever things are honest, yeah. whatsoever things are just, yeah. whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, Think on these things. Yes. Verse 9 says, Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. Mm -hmm. And the God of peace shall be with you. Oh, I just simply want to talk about elements of thanksgiving. All right. Elements of thanksgiving. The passage before us today deals with the peace of God that comes with the total surrender of all things. It is the peace of God in times of trouble. It is the peace of God that overwhelms our worries and helps us to rest in the will of God, even when we can't see what lies ahead. The key to having this kind of peace is in possessing a heart that is thankful. Thanksgiving is an important theme throughout the Bible and it is mentioned over 140 times. Mm -hmm. David spoke about it in Psalm 103. The list of God's blessings is inexhaustible and makes him worthy of thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Daniel practiced it in Daniel 6 and 10. He demonstrates the power of giving thanks, even when you're in the midst of trials. Yeah, yeah. But he went on and kneeled on his knees anyway, prayed three times a day, and gave thanks to God despite the consequences of his actions. Mm -hmm. Paul wrote about it in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, where he said, In everything give thanks, yeah. for this is the will of God concerning you. God deserves, commands, expects our thankfulness in all areas of our lives mm -hmm. at all times. Yeah. As Christian believers, I certainly hope that we would just not uh, use this time of year only to give God hearty thanks. I would hope that every day, every moment that you think about it, every time it crosses your mind, Every time you get quiet and have a silent moment or two, that you are reminded of how much you have to be thankful for. Amen. I think it becomes apparent to us, the older we get, we're grateful when we see a certain age or get to a certain age, and we're grateful for the small things. Yeah. In my immaturity and growing in my faith, I was thankful for a car, mm -hmm. thankful for clothes and three or four dollars. Those are temporal blessings yes. that, of course, you ought to be thankful for. Right. But as you mature, yeah. and as you grow, as you start to age, mm -hmm. you start thanking God just to be able to get up yeah. there. Right. Yeah. You, you thank God that nobody had to feed you. Yeah. You were able to dress yourself. Yeah. And as the old folk used to say, I was clothed yeah. and in my right mind. And I had a reasonable portion of health and strength. Some of y'all from the old church. Just that is enough to be thankful for. You look at television and read the newspaper. And look at what's going on in third world countries. And then the people in our own country suffering, who are homeless and begging, sleeping on the streets. And last night, you had a warm, comfortable bed yeah, to sleep yeah, in. Yeah. 
You had a warm house to walk around in. Perhaps some of you even have fireplaces. You were able to light the fire and lay down in front of the fire with some cookies and apple cider. <laughs> but we ought to be thankful, and that's enough to be thankful for. Be able to have that kind of time to sit around and have a uh, firehouse chat. But I could have been dead sleeping in my grave. Yeah. Yeah. God in his infinite mercy, yeah. in his gracious loving kindness has yeah. Yeah. given us yet another opportunity to give his name thanks. Amen. Yeah. When we look at the text where Paul shares with the saints at Caesarea Philippi, he shows us that there are three looks or three elements that the church ought to have whenever you're thinking about Thanksgiving. All right. In verse number six, the first element the church ought to have towards Thanksgiving is, number one, look upwards. When you look up, you can give God thanks. He says, be careful for nothing. The word careful means don't be anxious. Don't be worried over anything. Don't let your life get all twisted up to where you get nervous about whether or not God is going to come through. That ought to never be a concern for the believer because with God, there is no such thing as an emergency. I need to remind somebody this morning that God neither sleeps nor slumbers. And there's nothing that will ever catch God by surprise. Whatever happens in your life is no shock to God. So be careful, be anxious, don't worry about anything. But in everything, that's how you keep from being anxious. That's how you keep from worrying in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Make your request known unto God. If you're going to worry, don't pray. If you're going to pray, don't worry. You look up and realize that your blessings don't come from your bank account. They come from your blessing no connections. Your blessing don't come from your hookups, your degree, or your social popularity. They don't come from your job or income or even, as smart as you are, your intellect. All of our help comes from God. Again, you've got to be awfully young here not to realize where your blessing comes from. Uh, it, it comes from looking up and realizing that when you pray, that's a sign of dependence. When you pray, you say to God, I can't, but you can't. I'm limited, but yeah. you are unlimited. Right. Yeah. I don't have it, but you have everything. Yeah. The scripture says that he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Yeah. Psalm 24 says, the earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Yeah. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. Psalm 27 says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Everything I need comes not from down, but from up. You've got to get your mind right if you're going to be a thankful person. Because you woke up this morning. There's no guarantee you're going to wake up tomorrow morning. And when you wake up, there's no guarantee you're going to get up. Your strength has to come from God. Your health has to come from God. Your good mind has to come from God. We take for granted just breathing every day. We take for granted the mobility of our limbs. But when you went to bed last night, you know what time you went to bed. But you don't know what time you fell asleep. And while you were sleeping, God kept your heart beating all night long. He kept your lungs expanding with air in and out all night long. And he did that when you were asleep. So when you woke up this morning, if you didn't say thank you, right now would be a good time to say thank you. Because some people went to bed last night who didn't wake up this morning. The alarm clock went off and they were remain unresponsive. But God woke you up this morning in your right mind and that didn't come from you. Well, every time you look up, you ought to tell God, thank you. Thank you for the air you breathe. 
Thank you for the clothes you wear. Thank you for the house you live in. For the job you have to go to in the morning. Or if you've been able to retire, thank him for that. Uh, he, he's put food on your table and provided for your family. These are small things that we take for granted. But there are so many people outdoors with no coat to wear, no shoes to put on. God's been good to us as long as you keep looking up, blessings will come down. If I would praise us go up, blessings come down. There's a lot of homelessness, especially in California, in certain parts of Oakland and the San Francisco Bay Area. They have what they call homeless encampments. You see people who have no shoes, no coats, their meals come out of trash cans, garbage bins at fast food restaurants. They live under cardboard boxes in parks and underneath freeways. No heat, no lights, no water. Uh, no restroom facility. They have a number of health issues because they don't have access to health care. Right. They've been forgotten. Yeah. In the minds of their family, they are an afterthought. Yeah. Society considers them an inconvenience and thus shuns them. Yeah. When they beg, they're automatically prejudged as to what they're going to use the money for. Yeah. And believe it or not, Many of them are former doctors and lawyers and professors yeah. from yeah. all around the Bay Area. Yeah. And when you think long and hard about their plight, you'll discover that none of us are that far removed from being in their same way. Right. Right. You see, the problem of being in church a while is you start thinking that you're more than folk who are not in church. Right. And you think life can't turn on you. Uh, and you think you, you can't have a reversal of fortune, but the same people you look down your church nose at, the same people you despise, the same people you wish would just get out of the way and hush and go sit down somewhere, they may be the one God raises up to have much while you have nothing. I don't take my blessing for granted because God doesn't have to do anything for me. All my blessings come down because of God's mercy. Amen. The Bible says it is the Lord's mercy that we're not consumed. And those mercies are new every morning. Even when I'm on faithfulness, Lamentation 3 says, Great is thy faithfulness toward me. He's faithful when I'm faithful. You're going to take an upward look. And when you look up, you ought to say thank you. Then verse 7 tells us we ought to Secondly, look around. Yeah. Verse 6 talks about looking up. Be careful for nothing. Mm -hmm. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. That's looking up. Mm -hmm. But verse 7, looking around, it says, And the peace of God, uh -huh. with passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Yeah. Look around. While you were sleeping last night, ambulances were rolling all over Richmond. Yeah. Police sirens were all over town. Mm -hmm. Shootings and drug overdoses were taking place. Yes. Every time you hear the news, there's some shooting or some robbery or yes. some drug deal going back. Yes. You're not safe even in your own home. Well. They'll break into your house and hold your whole family hostage. Yes. And when you look around and see all the stuff that's going on, yes. but in Christ there's a peace and contentment that surpasses all understand. Now I might have a reason to be nervous because I'm in the hood, but I've got a peace that surpasses all understanding. Because brothers and sisters, I've just made up my mind. Since the Lord is going to be up all night, it just makes sense for me to go to sleep. Ain't no sense in both of us being up all night. And, and since he neither sleep nor slumbers, what am I going to do walking around all night worried about? Lord, except the Lord keep your house. Yeah. Burglar bars and dogs won't keep them from coming in. Unless the Lord build a fence around you, your alarm system can't keep death from coming in. Amen. But there's a peace that comes to you when you know Christ. Yeah. And that peace surpasses all understanding. God's peace is not like the peace of the world. The world's peace is based on the world's thing. The world's peace is circumstantial and depends on comparison. 
The world's peace is fleeting. Here today, gone tomorrow. But God's peace, it overcomes and overshadows and drives away the anxiety of the world. Somebody here can testify, you didn't have a job for a little while, but you never missed a meal. There were days when you didn't know if you could make ends meet, but you never got put out of your house. Perhaps there were foreclosures and evictions all around your neighborhood, but you went to bed every night with a peace that surpassed all understanding. And God's peace to the world seems ludicrous because it transcends human understanding. Isaiah says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. Your mind is stayed on me because he trusted in me. Now, you know, you can't be with your children all the time. You don't know what's going on at school. You don't know what's happening at the bus stop. You, you don't know who's walking around the school, especially these days. But when you put them in the Lord's hand, you, you've got a peace that surpasses all understanding. And when folk around you are falling apart and people are wondering why you're keeping it all together, they don't understand that you've got something on the inside that can't be disturbed by atmospheric conditions. Oh, I wish we had more people that gone out who, who were more thermostats than thermometers. Thermometers go up and down depending on barometric pressure and atmospheric conditions on the outside. But thermostats control what's going on on the inside. No matter what the weather outside, it could be 14 degrees like it was today on the outside, but it's 74 in here. But, but the thermostat stat is not worried about atmospheric pressure. Come on now. The thermostat controls the conditions on the inside. That's right, that's right. That's and what right. you Christian here today has the thermostat on the inside on, called man. the Holy Spirit. He regulates and controls on, the goings on from within. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's when your world is crumbling around you, you you've got a peace. That passes all understanding. Your thermostat is working. You can shout when you're broke. You can shout when you get a check. You can shout when you're sick. You can shout when you're well. You can shout when they don't like you. You can shout when they don't like you. You can shout when you're up. You can shout when you're down. You recognize I can do all things through Christ who give me strength. Just look around. Look around. That's, that's what verse 7 is talking about. Shouters and praisers. Woo! have learned to shut out the noise yeah. from people who don't like shouting and praising. Well, Reminded of the woman who had the alabaster box. She came in that Pharisee's house and just broke open that box and yeah. poured out that expensive perfume on Jesus. Knowing that she could have been stoned for that expressive, expensive, extravagant act of love. All right. But when you want to see Jesus, when you're desperate enough, you don't care what protocol says. You, you don't care what decorum says. Uh, when you want to see Jesus, you disregard life's barriers. Yeah. You don't pay any attention to the detour signs of tradition. You, you just want to give God the glory for who he is and for what he's done in your life. And if that aggravates folks around you, there's an old saying, oh well. I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on Jesus. Because I've got a story to tell. God has kept you from last Sunday to this present moment. He saved your soul and made you whole. That's a story to tell. He died and rose for your sin. That's a story to tell. Kept you all night last night. Kept you when you were on I-70. Kept you on 27, yeah. kept you on 40, yeah. kept you on Main Street, yeah. kept you on 12th Street, yeah. kept you on E Street. He, yeah. he kept you despite yeah. high speed chases going on in town. He, yeah. he kept you out of the path of danger. He yeah. kept you from a stray bullet hitting you outside your head. There was an accident you could have been in, but when you look around, if you've got a good sense, you've got to tell the Lord, thank you. Well, we got one more verse here. I know the time is far spent. Verse 6 says, you got to look up and say thank you. Verse 7 says, you look around, 
you got to say thank you. Yeah. Verse 8 said if you look ahead, okay. you got to say thank you. Yeah. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, uh -huh. whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, yeah, yeah. whatsoever things are lovely, yeah. whatsoever things are good report, yeah. if there be any virtue, there be any praise, yeah. think on these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your proof feet got you from point A to point B. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a new car in your future. All right, all right. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you might have poor health now, uh, but you're struggling with the doctor. Mm -hmm. And the doctor has given up. Mm -hmm. But Jesus has more medicine in the hymn of his God than either one of you can think about that the whole world may have. He can give you a sense of peace and joy that no bottle of medicine will ever be able to produce. Paul said, I've learned whatever state I'm in to be content. I know how to act when I'm empty. I know how to act when I'm full. I know how to act when I'm up. And I know how to act when I'm down. Yeah. And, and yet, many of us at times have seemed to live life on empty with no peace. Yes, and, and just how do you live life when you're running on empty? Mm -hmm. uh, but when you walk with the Lord, he'll give you a peace yeah. and a contentment yeah. that no money can buy. Because yeah. money can buy food, but not an appetite. Yeah. Money yeah. can buy medicine, but not good health. Yeah. Money can buy a house but not a home. Money can buy sex, but not love. You can be something that money can't buy. And that's a peace that passes all understanding. And the blessing you've been praying for hadn't come yet? Just look up. Look around. Look ahead. Your miracle is on the way. Your breakthrough is on the way because God knows how to resurrect a dead life Dead hopes, yeah. dead aspirations, yeah. dead relationships, mm -hmm. and dead expectations. Yeah. Because you're looking at a miracle. I'm God's trophy of what's looking up and looking around and looking ahead, yeah. what it will do with a person's life. Yeah. I've already seen God move in some miraculous way, not just in my life, but there are people here today Amen. who have their own testimony. Yeah. When you look up, Look around and look ahead that God is doing great things. I, I wish I had somebody who is thankful this morning. I wish I had somebody who is grateful this morning. And God has been working. Yes, you might be the victim of that man who walked out and left you with those children for you to raise by yourself. Nobody but the Lord helps you through that. Sometimes you have more money than you have money. But God always made ends yeah, meet. Yeah. You ought to tell God, thank you. Yeah. You know, the enemies thought to be finished by now. Yeah. They lied on you, but they couldn't stop you. Yeah. They put stumbling blocks in your way, but you stepped around them. Yeah. They tried to pull you down, but every time you yeah. fell, God was always there to lift you up. Yeah. Because Christians are familiar with resurrection. Yeah. Ah, that's enough to look up. Look around and look ahead and tell God, thank you. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, the Bible said they stumbled and fell. No hope should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me from the secret place of his heaven. Anybody here ever needed to be hidden by the Lord? Anybody ever needed for him to be your shelter? If you needed him to be your strong time, yeah. uh, then you ought to help me testify that when you look up, yeah. look around and look ahead, yeah. God will bless. Yeah. Yeah. I said he'll bless. Yeah. Yeah. Hast thou not known? Have thou not heard that the everlasting God, what? the Lord, the creator of the earth, yeah. faileth not, neither is weary? There's no searching of his understanding. The youth shall faint and be weary. Come on, God. And the young men shall utterly fall. Oh. 
But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as people. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. If you look up, if you look around and look ahead, you see that God is doing great things. God has been up to something in your life. And if you trust and never doubt, he has shown up to bring you out. He's been a mother for somebody. Yeah. He's been a father for somebody. Yeah. He's been company for somebody that's been lonely. Yeah. He's been a friend when you're friendless. Bread when you're hungry. Anybody here got something to be thankful for? Yeah. You have to wait until Thanksgiving Day to tell God thank you. Come on, God. Sunday, right now, will be a good time to tell him thank you for all he's done for me. Thank you for the many storms you brought me through. Thank you for being my guide and my savior. Thank you for the comfort you give when our loved ones precede us. Uh, it helps to realize that weeping show enough may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. When I was down to my last time, I discovered that he was Jehovah Jireh, the God who will provide. If God has been good to you, you don't have to wait until Thanksgiving Day to tell him thank you. Just thank him right now. If, if he's made a way for you, you don't have to wait until Thanksgiving Day. Just tell him thank you right now. If he shines his light on you, you ought to tell him thank you right now. But, but most of all, if he saved your soul, you ought to tell him thank you right now. Jesus laid down his life for us. He endured suffering and pain. He was numbered with the transgressions and bore the sins of many. His success and triumph would correspond with the depth of his humiliation so that all who despise him would later show him respect. His face was disfigured and destitute and the world was excited while those who were righteous were disgusted. But Jesus went on and died on an old rugged cross. He took my place and was buried in a borrowed tomb. But right early Sunday morning, God opened all power in his hand. Power that he didn't steal. Power that he didn't borrow. Power that he didn't buy. Power that he was given. Uh-huh. God gave it to him in heaven and in earth.
it and we're gonna take a vote. He'll come back next week. If I say aye, aye, aye. They did good. Lord, just thank you again today for uh, your blessing and for your word and for prayer and for the reading of scripture and song. And we pray that uh, your word uh, embrace our hearts and that we would embrace your word and uh, realize that we don't have anything to be anxious for. Rule with the Bible that's now and forever. Shall we say, Amen? Oh.